I'm here with Craig Barnes, President and Professor of Pastoral Ministry at Princeton Theological Seminary. He's a prolific author and a regular columnist for Christian Century Magazine. He's deeply committed to the life of the church and has served as pastor of Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh and National Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C. Also, Craig was the driving force behind the establishment of the Frederick Beekner Writers Workshop at Princeton Theological Seminary. Thank you, Craig, for joining us today. It's my honor to be with you. As you know, Frederick Beekner will soon be turning 90 years old. Is there anything you would like to wish him for this great milestone? I think it would be spectacular if on his 90th birthday, the Holy Spirit gave him an extraordinary vision of the breadth of his impact on the kingdom of God and the world around it. I don't think there's any way possible that he could know how many people have been affected by his writings and his speaking, uh, because those who've had their lives overwhelmed by these writings often climb behind pulpits and they're writing different kinds of sermons, they go behind lecterns, they teach and prepare their lessons differently. Mr. Beekner has taught us a whole new way of communicating and of receiving the gospel, and there's just been a ripple effect from one to another to another to another. And I would just wish for a birthday present, the Spirit would give him a glimpse of the breadth of that impact. Thank you very much, Craig. I'm sure Mr. Beekner will greatly appreciate hearing from you. Next, can you tell me how you first learned about Mr. Beekner? Um, telling the truth came out just as I was entering seminary, and it made a pretty big splash pretty quickly. Uh, and we were all being taught a different way to preach than that book was modeling for us. And it was almost like subversive underground literature at the seminary. And, Students were saying, have you read Telling the Truth? Pass it on. And it was just overhauling our whole understanding of how one approaches scripture, how one does their hermeneutical work, and certainly how one talks about it to people around. And um, I was, he had me at hello with that book. What would you say the types of things that most attract you to his writing? He has an incredible ability, and maybe others do this, but he, he, he was the first one I ever saw do it, to close the bridge between the contemporary individual and scripture. The classic way we were taught how to do preaching is that you have this body of ancient literature called the Bible, and the preacher does exegesis of that, and then tries to draw insights out of that, building a bridge to the contemporary context. And Beekner just doesn't bother with the bridge. He uh, collapses the contemporary context and the scripture together so that Pilate is this kind of semi-burned-out bureaucrat who gets up in the morning and he throws his cigarettes in the toilet and then he slumps in the back of his limousine. And I mean, there's no, there's, there's, <laughs> there's no distance anymore between our culture and our context and the scriptures. That's, I think, his genius. How would you think that Mr. Beaker's writing has influenced your career? Uh, well, he's, he's taught me to take chances uh, in preaching and in writing. He, what he did with Telling the Truth and so many of the books afterwards was very risky. Uh, and I, I appreciate the art of what he's done. I appreciate this whole new genre of religious literature that he's introduced. Uh, but frankly, I'm equally impressed with the risk that he took in doing that. And um, while he has his own Beekner voice that one dare not try to replicate because we're not Beekner, he has taught a whole generation of preachers, pastors, um, to take risk, uh, to tell the truth, um, to um, honor the silence that comes before the truth. Um, all of these are Beeknerisms that just stayed with me uh, throughout my whole career. You mentioned telling the truth. Well, uh, telling the truth was my first, and so it will always have a cherished place in my heart. Because I can't even tell you how many times I've read it. In fact, through the generosity of the Beekner Foundation, we were able to place this book in the hands of all of our graduates, uh, and I can't tell you the 
feedback I get from them after they've left and begun their ministry and the dust has settled and they pull that book out and they read it a year later and they said, I, you should be giving this to those to us when we first began our seminary journey uh, because it's they've already seen the impact and effect it's had on them in their new ministry. So I love telling the truth and I keep coming back to it. But I think the, the book that probably had the greatest impact on me is the theological ABCs because he does in that book for theology what he does for the scriptures and many of his other books when he's retelling the biblical stories and not it's not contemporizing them but he's just making um, again he's, he's, he's removing the bridge between contemporary society and, and scripture and he's we're reading these ancient people in scripture as if they were the person that lives next door. He does that same thing with theology and uh, theological ABCs, and he, he uh, does a wonderfully orthodox job of handling each of the core theological affirmations of the church, but without changing the orthodoxy, with almost every entry there's a twist. Uh, he comes at it slant. He, he, just, he takes the, the theological affirmation that we've always held he just turns it, like maybe 45 degrees, so you can see it from a different angle. And so many other things open up uh, in that, that theological affirmation when he does that. Um, so that's why, I, and again, what I love about that book is not only the content of it, but the, the lessons in learning how to do it, how to take a theological affirmation or a biblical text and stay with it until you turned it just enough to see something new that you've never seen before. I'm wondering if there were any specific pieces of your own work that had been inspired in one way or another by Mr. Beekner. Well, I think the, the way he's inspired me the most is in the weekly writing of sermons. As I mentioned before, to take risk in the writing of the sermon. Uh, to never assume that this scripture text filled with ancient uh, characters has to somehow be redeemed for the contemporary audience. Uh, the contemporary audience can be found in scripture. He's taught me how to, how to dig around in my exegesis of scripture and look for my own parishioners. Uh, I learned that method through just paying careful attention to his, his writings. So I think he's had an even more dramatic impact in the weekly development of sermons than he has in the, in the books that I've written. I, again, I think it'd be a mistake to try to write like Mr. Beekner because I'm not him. But um, the lessons of how to do exegesis uh, are transferable to anybody, and he's had a tremendous impact on my sermon writing. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Craig. So stepping back a moment, more broadly speaking, what influence would you say Mr. Beekner has had on Christianity and the world at large? I think for those who, who made their way through much of the body of his work, he's, he's helped us see the world as being more sacred than we assume it is. Uh, he has a way of breaking down sacred, secular barriers. I don't think he's much of a respecter of that barrier. And he demonstrates the secularity of things that we think are spiritual and the spirituality of things that we would call, call uh, secular. And, um, and he's demonstrated the spirituality of things that we would call secular. Uh, I think that was a tremendous, tremendous contribution. It's obvious that he believes that God so loved the world, the whole world, and that when uh, Christ stretched out his arms on the cross, you know, it was to embrace everyone. And you find that underlying conviction in many of his writings. It's a great help. I realize this is a little difficult, but if you were to sum up Fred in a few words, what would you say? Unexpected. He's, his, his whole approach to the faith, to the text, to theological affirmations is completely unexpected, often ironic. Um, and again, I think that's part of what was so wonderful about uh, all of his writings is that you get done with something you thought, I never would have seen it that way or I never thought of it that way. And as a result, even when you put down the book, all 
your thinking continues and you continue to walk down a whole new path that he introduced to you that you didn't even know was there. And um, again, that's had a tremendous impact on my own writing of sermons and in my teaching of our students about preaching. I tell them all the time, it doesn't matter how long it takes, don't ever sit down to actually write the sermon until you have found a twist in the text that you didn't see that was there. It doesn't matter even how many times you preach on the same text, especially like at Advent, there's always something there you haven't seen before. If you stay with it long enough, you'll find the twist that's going to open up so many new insights, and your people who are expecting the sermon to go a particular way will be thrilled that you were unexpected in, in the way that you delivered it. That um, They'll be thrilled that the way you delivered it was unexpected. Uh, they'll love the ironic twist that you find. Because again, it just opens up meaning. Mr. Beekner is the one who taught us all how to do that. It was my honor to be a, a small part of uh, affirming this great man's contributions to the Saul. <laughs>